Welcome everyone to our artist talk tonight with our exhibiting artists in the Popcorn Gallery, Catherine Zuland Mann. We're really thrilled to have Catherine with us tonight. How we're going to structure this, um, I'm going to do a brief introduction of Catherine, her background, and then I'll hand it over to her and she will um, do about a 10 minute uh, presentation about her work, her ideas, her concepts, and the show in our popcorn gallery at Glen Echo Park. Um, and then her and I will chat about her work. And then at the end, um, the last maybe 10 minutes, uh, we'll open it up for um, a Q&A. So a little bit about Catherine. Um, let's see. Um, Catherine creates large-scale paintings and paper installations that examine mythology, identity, and landscape. Her current show at Glen Echo Park's Popcorn Gallery titled Not Forest combines collage, mosaic, and window installations to examine themes of escapism, accumulation, utopia, and magic. Large paint, large paintings were with repetitive drawings from a personal lexicon and mythology, including traditional still life imagery from the artist's background as a Sumi'i ink painter. The show's signature piece is a vinyl on window installation where visitors are invited to contribute to the site specific installation using translucent painted vinyl, creating an effect that mimics stained glass. Um, she is a recipient of the Sustainable Arts Foundation grant, the Fulbright grant, the Hamiltonian Fellowship in Washington, D.C., and other notable awards and fellowships. Her works, her artworks have been displayed at the Krieger Museum, Walters Art Museum, American University Museum, the U.S. Consulate in Dubai, and the U.S. Embassy in Cameroon, among other venues. Catherine has an MFA from Maryland Institute College of Art in Baltimore and a BA in Visual Arts from Brown University. So please join me in welcoming Catherine Zuland, ma'am. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. Um, I'm excited to talk with Ama about this show. This has been a really joyful show, um, and it's been really wonderful to see how it's evolved over the course of the last uh, month and a half. Um, but we thought I could start out by just giving a little bit of an intro to my practice, um, and then we'll evolve into a conversation and um, because it's kind of an intimate gathering, maybe we can uh, take advantage of that um, for this talk and um, just like pipe up and we can all chat together. Okay, so I make, um, I'm a painter. I do mostly paintings on paper and then I also do some installation work and some public art. Um, all of my work though, it's all attempting to explore very similar themes. And those themes have a lot to do with fragmentation um, and building worlds out of many different fragments, uh, often incongruous fragments that all come together and then create something um, that feels very much like a landscape, um, but is speaking a somewhat abstract language, but that also brings in a lot of details um, from the world around us and from art history. So I often do very large pieces. This is like a piece um, that was shown at the Krieger Museum. Um, it was 40 feet long um, and eight feet tall. Can we go to the next one? Um, I often begin a lot of my works by pouring ink. Um, so it most of my paintings begin with a chance operation. Um, and I and that is pouring paint and ink onto paper as it lays on the floor of the studio and then allowing that puddle to slowly dry over time. So the first move in everything that I make is a move that is decided not by the artist's hand, but instead by chance, by evaporation. 
um, by fluid dynamics. And then I build up the rest of the world of the painting around that initial pour. Can you go to the next slide? Um, I also, I, this, this is very, a bit of a newer part of my practice, um, but I also do mosaics, which um, seem, might seem like the material is kind of opposite of ink and paper. Um, but I'm especially really interested in now finding ways that mosaic, which is this very storied art historical medium, can be combined um, with paper and ink, which is um, something that is in a few of the pieces in the show um, that's up right now at the Popcorn Gallery. Not this piece though, this is a, an earlier example. Next uh, slide. Um, all of these pieces that I'm showing here that we're kind of cycling through, they are large. So I want, my main goal in creating artwork is for it to feel fully immersive um, and to have a feeling of creating an environment, um, creating a world, feeling like these can be portholes to other universes. So every one of these pieces, um, like this piece that's in, uh, this, in this slide is a seven foot tall painting. Next slide. Um, another example of another really large piece. Um, so all of these pieces that I've shown so far, these are examples of my previous body of work. They're all pieces from the past like 10 years of my practice. Um, this piece is maybe from about like six or seven years ago. Um, and you can sort of see they're all highly abstract, but they're very much of the the personality of each of these pieces comes from these very disparate abstract languages bumping up and pushing up against one another. Um, so having that type of visual incongruity is something that I'm constantly trying to play with in my practice. Um, and in this show, I've tried to do push that idea um, to new limits. Next slide. Um, another part of my practice uh, that is a little bit newer is um, making installations on windows with vinyl. So this is a piece that we're looking at right now. This is from 2018, I believe, um, where I did the same. I, I essentially created my paintings except for with that practice of beginning the pour, beginning paintings with a pour, then building up around it and um, building these worlds out of many, many small parts of minutia and then having that grow into something larger. I did all that except for on vinyl with acrylic and then pasting that vinyl onto windows in, um, in the gallery. And then the sun shining through those windows creates this effect of stained glass. So this image here is the first time um, that I worked in that uh, particular media and I uh, push it further in this in this show. Next slide. So if we go now I'm going to show some images from the show that's up at the popcorn gallery. So this is another example of mosaic. So this is a piece as soon as you enter into the gallery, it's on your right. Um, it's a piece of grouted mosaic. It's been created with stone um, tiles ceramic tiles, glass tiles, found objects, rocks, um, and they've all been grouted together to create a mosaic. Um, and that is usually where mosaics kind of stop. But I became interested in what can happen when I use this material uh, of mosaic, which is so storied, um, but use it as one substrate, use it as one layer of many, and then collage on top of that um, mosaic um, with rice paper and with traditional Sumi painting, um, traditional Chinese painting, which is how I was originally trained as a painter. Um, that kind of clashing of art history of cultures um, really speaks to me. And that's kind of something that is comes from my personal background and um, having that idea of these incongruous elements coming together. Um, it's a, just a really exciting way to explore that idea. Next slide. 
Here's a detail from that piece. If anybody hasn't seen the show, this is up in the show right now. Next slide. Um, there are three bodies of work in this show. So there's the mosaic pieces, there are paper paintings, and then there is that signature piece, um, that keystone piece that um, I was talking about of the um, vinyl on the windows. So this is an example of some of the paper paintings. You can see that pour coming through the center of the piece, and then I'm building up the rest of the painting around that initial chance operation. Next slide. This is one of the mosaic works that's up in the show. Um, once again, it's a panel, wood panel that's been grouted with found object, glass, stone, and ceramic, um, and then used that as a first layer upon which to collage over. Next slide. And then finally, the big piece of the show, the piece that I was most excited by, the piece that I got grant money in order to make sure what could happen in this show um, wasn't created by me at all. It was created by everybody who came into the show over the class, uh, over the last month. Um, so the popcorn gallery is this like beautiful space. And one of the signature elements of that space is that it has a lot of light shining through and it has these windows that kind of arch throughout um, the outer wall of the gallery. And as a painter, usually windows mean you can't like work with the space, but I loved the idea of this actually just being one large canvas. So we created a workstation in the center of the space um, in which we provided scissors and all of these pre-painted sheets of vinyl that I had previously painted just with swaths of acrylic color um, and some pores. Uh, and then everyone who came into the space, there was very little direction other than take a piece of vinyl, cut it into any shape that you're interested in. And then you can peel the backing off of the vinyl and it turns into essentially a big sticker, a sticker in a shape of your choosing and a design that you've created. And then everyone was invited to stick those stickers onto the window. Um, and if you go to the next slide, you can get a sense of, oh, and here's, uh, there's even more windows. Um, mm -hmm. This is uh, the other windows to the furthest left when you enter into the gallery. Um, and then finally, this is an image of how the piece is looking approximately right now. It's been built up even a little bit more than this. Um, but that has been a living, breathing, growing part of the show. The beginning of the show, um, this piece didn't exist. And then it kind of grew uh, until it is at the state that you see now today. And it's been created by hundreds of people who have come through the space. So you had shown um, another, um, I guess, body of work you had done, you know, in a different space in 2018. Also, you covering the windows and creating, you know, this colorful, fluid um, painting on the window with vinyl, I believe. Um, but you created that yourself. Um, but this time, you kind of flipped you know, the process a little bit or the idea a little bit and invited um, the public visitors to contribute to creating this uh, monumental um, wall window, you know, um, piece. Um, talk about um, the idea behind that, because with this, you don't really have control over you know, the end product, the end, you know, the finished piece, and it's also evolving and growing over. I mean, we opened the show in August, so it's been up for a couple of months now. Um, so it's it's grown over the course of the show. So can you talk about, um, you know, the importance of the public's contribution to this work and how does their contribution enhance, you know, the body of work in the show and you letting them kind of have free reign um, 
to do whatever and be part of um, this installation. You're right that this is, yeah, so this was not the first time I've worked with painted vinyl on windows. It's a part of my practice that I kind of am slowly growing, um, but it is the first time that I have just truly stepped away. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I mean, the piece is not even really, it's not my piece. Um, the the prompt, I suppose, is my prompt, but mm -hmm. um, the piece belongs to everyone who has entered into the space. Um, collaboration is a big part of my practice. Um, it's something that I come back to a lot. Um, I've collaborated with kids, uh, with seniors, with college students, with visitors to national parks, with tourists, um, with dancers, with other artists. Um, and that's a really important um, part of what I do, I think, because like I was saying when I was introducing my work, my work is so much about like, I want to create something that seems like it's another place, but then that other place, I don't want it to be a pure place. I want mm -hmm. it to be an impure place, a place mm -hmm. in which many different things that shouldn't shouldn't fit together are fit together anyway. Mm -hmm. um, all of my work I think of as a celebration of that fragmentation, a celebration of that impurity. Um, and so that's what I'm constantly thinking about when I am choosing new materials, when I'm working with the mosaic. Um, and in a way, the vinyl uh, piece that is created by so many other people, it is something of a mosaic. Um, it's been created by many, many different voices. Mm -hmm. um, and all of those people coming together are inherently going to make something that's more interesting, I think, than what I could do coming from just my one voice. I was interested in having that diversity of voices represented in one piece. Um, and when you invite that many people to come in and to try to create one thing, it's very easy for that to kind of devolve into cacophony and um, for those voices to get lost and it can just look kind of like a muddled mess. Um, but this technique is really forgiving um, because it's all been painted by me. So it, the colors are something that I did have control over the way that they look, that kind of the brushy, the brush strokes of the color, that is something that is uniform. Um, and then of course the sun is uniform coming through the, the light itself is something that kind of unifies the entire um, piece, even though it's coming from the, the shapes have been cut by five-year-olds and 30 year olds and 80 year olds um, and being able to have that kind of dance between uh, diversity of voices and then also uh, like a unifying um, feel, you know, it's all contained within the windows. The mullions of the windows are, so, are, are something of a unifying feel as well. Mm -hmm. um, so it has this kind of play between uh, chaos and control yeah. um, somebody said in the in the the chat asked um what the prompt is and there actually is no prompt I thought about it like um maybe we should like everyone should like make a leaf or something it would make like a big forest um but instead it was it wasn't really I decided in the end not to give a conceptual prompt instead they're on that um Work, work table, there are just directions of how to do it, um, but there isn't actually a conceptual prompt in terms of, um, you should think about this when you're, when you're adding to, adding to the installation. It's really just about, um, do you want to leave a mark? Here's a way for you to do it. <laughs> That's great. And can you talk about the material in case people are not exactly sure what this material is on the window so vine it's it's just vinyl um i bought it online um it comes in these long rolls uh and it's the same stuff that is usually used for signage um 
and uh yeah it's a it's a long roll of translucent vinyl um that i brought back to the studio and poured and painted over with transparent washes of acrylic um and that's it and then i brought those rolls to the gallery we cut them into um smaller uh, portions so that they would be usable by anybody who dropped by, especially for kids. Mm -hmm. um, and then we stuck all of those portions into the little trolley cart that you see there next to the um, work table. And then, um, yeah, somebody mentioned trusting the process. That was, that was what happened. Yeah. Um, and I think that like having, I mean, it's, having that kind of lack of control is definitely scary for me because you know like what if it looks bad or something mm -hmm. um but I think that that's kind of the point um and this is the piece that has the least amount of um artist control obviously I have no control at all um but all of the work actually is about kind of toying with losing um, losing control in some ways. Even the pieces that seem so detailed, decorative, and kind of labor intensive, um, those are also uh, partly about losing control. Right. And yeah, initially, just so you all know, we actually installed the top of the window pieces because we didn't want visitors to get on a ladder and all that. So we started off um, putting these pieces at the top up and then the rest of the, yeah, the windows were bare and they just kept getting filled every single week. <laughs> so it's really amazing how it's, evol it's evolved into this really um, monumental, dynamic, colorful, um, window painting. It, it's really magnificent. And you should all see the shapes um, and how um, the shapes kind of dance on the floors when it's there's beautiful, bright sunlight. Um, hopefully you all, you know, come to visit um, and see it before it closes this weekend, October 1st. Um, but there's this really beautiful um, kaleidoscope effect on the gallery floor when, you know, um, the sun, you know, shines through um, these shapes. It's really magnificent and um, hypnotic. <laughs> um, Catherine, can you talk about the title of the show, Not Forest? So not as in K-N-O-T, Forest. Can you talk about the title and the idea behind a title and how it speaks to the concepts you're exploring in um, the show. So the title is the last part of the show. It was um, something that titling my work and titling shows is difficult for me. Um, it's it's like the hardest part of the, of the process. Um, but I liked the idea of creating a title that would identify the entire show as one environment. Um, so. I was talking about each of my works as like dealing with environments. And I think of all of them as landscapes. Um, I think of everything that I do as kind of relating at least in some way to landscape painting. Um, partly because that was originally how I learned how to paint um, in terms of uh, I would, I studied underneath a Sumi ink master um, painting, traditional Chinese painting. Um, so even the pieces that feel very abstract, they still reference landscapes. Um, and I liked the idea of the forest, um, the, the whole environment of the show itself being a forest, but it's not a forest made out of your typical understanding of like trees and leaves and grasses. Um, instead, it's made out of knots um, tied together. So all of the pieces, they're very much about um, getting lost, um, and getting lost within the painting surface, within the, the narrative of the painting, um, and 
being kind of pleasurably in a, in a maze. Um, and to me, uh, not is it references that. So all of these pieces, um, they're about kind of getting tied into knots and that's part of the point, um, losing yourself pleasurably in, in the getting tied into knots. Interesting. There isn't actually literally any knots at all in the no. show. <laughs> <laughs> and, so and, more of a metaphor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the title because, yeah, I just feel like there's this, yeah, entanglement, you know, um, things intertwining. Um, and then with the window piece, you also have people coming together, you know, this kind of like, creating this um I don't know I want to say a bond but it's like you know different um uh artistic um ideas or executions coming together and like creating a new you know new meaning and new forms of art in a way right. um and also in your work, you frequently reference, you know, traditional Chinese still life. You talked about your your background as and trained as a Sumi E ink painter. Maybe you can talk a little bit about what Sumi E ink painting is, but I'm also interested in you talking a little bit about some of the images, imagery um, that you reference in your works, um, like you know, bamboo, um, plum blossoms orchids, chrysanthemums, et cetera. Um, and those are, um, I guess, botanicals that you typically see in um, Chinese still life paintings. So maybe talk about um, how that links to, you know, your, you know, Chinese heritage and also maybe art history, Chinese art history. Yeah, so when I was a teenager, um, I. I would go back to Taiwan where I have a lot of family um, every summer. And a lot of the time I would be sitting around being kind of bored. So <laughs> my mother and my my family um, decided to enroll me in uh, traditional painting classes. Um, so that was how I originally learned about what painting could be. Um, uh, and that was at a really young age. And the way that you kind of learn those techniques is very repetitive, um, very skill oriented, very hand oriented. Um, so I created hundreds of copies of bamboo, plum blossoms, chrysanthemums, um, these really specific visual rebuses and symbols from Chinese art history. And those have stuck with me um, into my current work and even now as a person who is um, 40 and making work that doesn't clearly look like those original traditional paintings. Um, but the idea behind specifically the landscape paintings um, in uh, Chinese art history, it is really an engine for everything that I do. Um, if you think about like scrolls of landscape painting, the idea for a visual uh, encounter with those is one that is not just, you don't just look at um, one image, you kind of move, you're, you're meant to look at a scroll as if you're reading a book, you're moving from one piece to another, two pieces to another. So you can really feel like you're getting lost and becoming small and entering into a landscape. And that's what I want to do with everything that I, all, all of my work. Um, and then I do bring back those really specific symbols from Chinese art history, but I combine them with other botanical imagery. So I often, I'm populating my worlds with botanical imagery a lot, a lot of leaves, a lot of flowers. And then those are coming from either that art historical tradition or they're like the weeds and the trees that are immediately outside my door um, that I'm seeing in my daily life as a person living in Washington, DC. Um, and I love being able to combine those things 
Um, in terms of the specifics of those um, plants, um, those plants that Ama just read out, those are um, called the four gentlemen in Chinese art history. Um, plum blossoms, chrysanthemums, bamboo and orchids. There are four um, very symbolic plants that will be that you see often repeated over and over again. Um, and they often reference the four seasons. Um, plum blossoms arrive in the spring, chrysanthemums can live deep into the winter, um, orchids and bamboo are in the summer and the fall, the opposite actually, uh, vice versa. Um, and so they have these references that symbolize the four seasons, but then in turn, those four seasons refer to the cycles of life and death. Um, so a chrysanthemum is something that is occurring during winter. It's a kind of symbol of, of the end of life. Um, and I really love being able to bring that deep history that's been repeated in so many different works over Chinese art history um, and bring that into my world um, as an Asian American. Right. And also you are referencing Western traditional art. So, you know, the mosaics and the, um, the translucent um, vinyl to create stained glass. Um, talk about how you're meshing the two and your kind of like how you're taking inspiration or borrowing from those ancient forms of art making. Yeah, I definitely say borrowing is, is like the right word. Mm -hmm. um, mosaic is uh, such a deep part of Western art history. Um, you're seeing it in ancient Rome, in ancient Greece, um, and then stained glass obviously is this long history in Christian art history. Um, I really like being able to take these media, these materials that are often seen as very pure. Like if you think about mosaic and stained glass, people will make a mosaic or they'll make a piece of stained glass. They're both like techniques that are not known to a lot of people. Um, and they're seen as kind of precious. And then they're also seen as like a standalone thing. Like a mosaic is just, there's a mosaic, it's on the floor and then that's it. Like you can't do anything else to the mosaic. Mm -hmm. um, and I like the idea of like having the thing not be so precious. Um, so taking the mosaic, really glorying and, and exploring and loving the process mm -hmm. of mosaic, but then not treating it as precious, covering up large swaths of the mosaic um, and having it be covered by sumi painting and rice paper, um, which is so materially opposite, the like hardness and the earthiness of the stone mosaic versus the lightness and the flimsiness of, of rice paper. Um, having those two things kind of coexist in the same space um, was really important to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, and you touched on that because I was going to ask about those two, the, you know, the large scale um, paintings on paper, how they're so light and fluid and organic. Um, and in contrast, you have the mosaics, which um, in a way feel kind of heavy. I mean, they are heavy, literally, they're heavy when we're installing them. Um, I can't remember how many pounds. Um, but also in terms of the, the execution, it seems very, um, you know, organized and, in, you know, orderly. So there is that duality because, you know, typically you're known for like your spontaneous gestural markings. And then you have these mosaics that are very, very specific and orderly. So um, I, I thought that was really interesting. And, and also you have the, the beautiful window vinyl, you know, paintings, which is very organic and, and loose and not prescribed at all. So I thought that was really interesting that you have those opposing 
um, uh, you know, pieces. Right. In, they're kind of like the they're ends of a spectrum, but they mm -hmm. still they are still fitting within the same community. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. it's like I've been talking about each piece having these like the a wide variety of voices within the piece. I also want the show to have that as well. Um, so this work is a lot of it is like highly decorative. Um, and a lot of my work is about kind of embracing that, that, that decorativeness, um, ornamentation, um, but having some of that decorative joy come through it very quickly. The speed of the piece is, uh, like the vinyl piece, that speed is really obviously quick. Mm -hmm. Um, a, four-year-old can come in and cut a triangle and smack it on the on the window and it's been changed um but whereas the mosaics um it's just a slower process um they are inherently heavier um but i like having both of those those citizens of of, of the show existing in the same space mm -hmm. um there's a question in the chat about the mosaics and their longevity and how mm -hmm. they work with with weathering so I mean there's a reason why mosaics are usually seen as a pure medium that you're not supposed to collage over um, because it will last forever if you do that um, if you don't do that sorry if you don't collage over them and you just treat them as you know it's a lot of stone that's fixed together with concrete that's going to last centuries um, what I've done is not going to last centuries so these people <laughs> cannot go outside um, but that's kind of, that's, I'm okay with that. Like I'm okay with them not being as fully archival um, as the original pure traditional um, ideas of mosaic being. Great. Thanks for looking at the chat. I, I've i forgotten about the chat box, but so I'm glad you're looking <laughs> at the chat box. That's great. Lots of great questions coming through and keep them coming folks. Um, so I wanted to shift gears a little bit and kind of, um, start to kind of explore this, um, idea in your works that you, um, that you typically, um, you know, um, I guess explore, um, and that's identity and hybridity. Um, and I wanted to, I guess, start with this idea of, you know, um, hybridity in your work and how, um, you know, in terms of, I, I keep going back to this uh, modern theories, Homi Baba, and he talks about this idea of a third space. And you talk about creating an environment, creating an ecosystem in your work. Um, and I kind of see your work as creating this kind of like alternative space for your visitors or for the viewer to experience. Um, and in this space, there's a, there are a lot of colliding ideas um, and there are a lot of, in a way, opposites and contradictions and things like that. Um, how do you see that? Is that um, like something you think about in terms of um, these colliding ideas and also um, creating new meanings and new interpretations when you bring these um, opposing ideas or concepts or even um, um, imagery together, like the Western and the Eastern. Um, you talked about, you know, taking something that's very pure and making it kind of impure. Um, I'd say that, like, the I mean I don't want to dictate what the viewer is going to get from these pieces but like that sense that constant kind of exploration and journey to to smash different things together it's all in the service of joy and pleasure mm. um I think of the pieces as pretty uh romantic mm -hmm. um uh, you mentioned, I think in the bio, I, I have something about um, escapism. Like, I think it is unapologetically, they are unapologetically escapist, unap unapologetically beautiful. Um, and that is kind of part of the point of these pieces is that um, 
for me, I'm coming from a place of I'm a biracial Asian American artist. Um, so it's I'm interested in how can I create these spaces that feel like kind of these new homes, feel like new worlds that you can have find enjoyment within, mm -hmm. um, but that are coming from that that still that still feel fragmented and the fragmentation is a part of the joy and of the pleasure itself. Um, and I think that, that that kind of concept, that's something that I touch on in different ways throughout the show and throughout my whole body of work. Um, but it's something that you, I, I think that everyone can understand this um, feeling that you don't, you, you don't belong in one particular box, mm -hmm. um, that there are these ideas, purest ideas of of who people are, um, but that no one truly feels like they can fit within that. Mm -hmm. um, that's something that is a big part of my just personal journey as a biracial person, um, as I think this is a big part of life for all Asian Americans. Um, and then I also grew up abroad as an expat. So um, that that idea of like not fitting in mm -hmm. um that was something that i i've constantly wrestled with in my personal life um and now these pieces are that that's kind of where they gain their strength from um is from that very wrestling yeah for sure it's kind of like you know like you mentioned like identity is not fixed right and it's there are complexities um, to each person's, you know, identity. And it's not um, that, um, I guess it's not that simple, <laughs> right? And um, so I think your work in a way is kind of, yeah, you're using your work in a way to kind of negotiate, you know, your identity in a way. Um, I don't know if that's a fair statement or to explore new environment true. or I also want it to be relevant I think that that idea is relevant to everyone mm -hmm. um, in in different ways for every person um and I think that that's kind of that's why the the like pleasurableness of like these large kaleidoscopic swaths of color is accessible to everyone yeah that's fantastic all right we are close to um, eight o'clock. So I want to give time for questions. Um, Catherine, is there anything you want to touch on before we transition to additional questions from participants? Yeah. Um, well, there's a couple of questions in the chat that I could like address right now. Okay, great. Uh, there's a question of were the results in the gallery what you expected um, and what was my intention that I wanted to release with the stained glass um, installation. Mm -hmm. um, I absolutely don't, it is absolutely not what I expected. Mm -hmm. I don't really know what I expected um, with this particular piece. Um, this was the piece that I was the most excited about I think for the show um I think it's the piece that I talked to you guys about the most um in planning the show and it was hard to talk about because it, it, it didn't exist up until everyone made it exist mm -hmm. um so in terms of like how it looks is it how I expected I don't I don't think so, but I didn't have like a really good sense in my head of how how it, how it would look anyway. Um, but I think I am pretty overjoyed with um, it, the final product and also just with the experience that the piece was able to provide um, to people. Amma, you mentioned something, you mentioned um, about taking these uh, materials that have this kind of almost pure or uh precious history to them and um how how i borrow those um i really like that the stained glass idea can be co-opted 
from become from something that is so precious and instead it, it turned into something that is so democratic mm. um, that that kind of feel of how it felt to be in the gallery with kids like all around sticking stuff onto the walls that's not something that I expected um but that's something that I'll definitely hold on to mm -hmm. and then I think there's another what was another question um somebody asked about uh my kids or how do I make the large work with the small humans around mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and that is a very uh difficult question you might be hearing them screaming in the background right now I hope not but it's happening <laughs> so I how do I make the work happen with the kids? I, I think that that um, l losing control, being okay with losing the control, that came with kids. Um, and being able to embrace that also benefits being able to make work with kids around. Um, the vinyl piece was, a lot of it was made by my kids um, who came in during the install and during the opening and uh, contributed a lot to that piece. Um, and I actually, since putting this show up, I've gotten more excited about the idea of bringing kids into the vinyl pieces in particular. Um, and I just started a job, I guess, as the um, artist in residence at the National Children's Museum. Um, and I'm going to be pushing this concept of vinyl on windows or on, on clear structures more at the National Children's Museum um, and bringing kids into that process. So I do make work that's big, but that doesn't necessarily mean like the larger the pieces, the more time goes into it. Um, that vinyl piece obviously is very large but the amount of time that I personally put into it is almost nothing uh that was that labor was created by you guys um so it's definitely about try, trying to find that balance but um if anybody else like actually knows the balance of, of how to like follow your career as an artist and you know keep your children alive then like please let me know because I definitely don't have the secrets <laughs> somebody said balance is an illusion yeah <laughs> that is so great because I mm -hmm. like all of the work is kind of about how balance is an illusion like I'm mm -hmm. not trying I'm not trying to make um serene well-balanced pieces um I'm I'm trying to make pieces that are over over overbalanced <laughs> that's great and Catherine what are you you said you're working with the National Children's Museum are you working on a project or a show at a gallery or museum so the National Children's Museum has a program where they bring in one artist every year okay uh, be the artist in residence and um you do a series of workshops at the museum um if anyone doesn't know it's a museum for kids it's at the ronald reagan building close to the white house um mm -hmm. it's this like beautiful kids museum which is all about having fun um and i hold workshops approximately once a month um and I just started so you know we haven't done that much yet I've had one workshop so far um but my idea is to take this vinyl um concept and they don't have good windows like you guys do mm -hmm. um, but I liked the idea of having kids create panels of the translucent vinyl and then taking the panels and building a structure um with them like a like a literal maze or tunnel. Um, so that's what I'm hopefully going to be building towards um, in the course of the next year. That's great. Well, congratulations. That sounds exciting. It's gonna keep you busy for some time. 
Um, and um, yeah, it's been a pleasure chatting with you and working with you. Um, I mean, since we started talking to you about doing a show um, at Glen Echo Park, I believe that was last year. And um, we've we've had such, um, I would say, great you know, experience working with you and um, collaborating with you. So um, thank you so much for um, being part of our community. And we hope that um, we'll get to work with you again in the future. And um, it sounds like lots of amazing opportunities are coming your way. So um, please don't forget us when, you know, you, you become this, you know, even bigger artist. <laughs> you're not taking our phone calls or text messages. Oh my God. No, that's <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, I really want to thank you guys. It was it's been such a joyful show. I think that it shows in, in the yeah. show itself. Mm -hmm. It's been such a pleasure. Yeah. I love I love you saying it's yeah, joyful show. It just brings a lot of joy to people and I, people walk into the gallery and they're just mesmerized and and really happy. So I think you definitely created a space and an environment where, yeah, people experience joy and, um, you know, positive, positive, uh, positivity. Um, so thank you for bringing that to the park. Um, and like I mentioned before, Catherine's show will be up through this Sunday. So I hope you all come by the park and check out the show and maybe put your, you know, your own um, vinyl piece on the window before um, it all comes down on Monday, sadly. Um, I wish we could keep it up forever, but we have <laughs> so many more shows coming up in that space. <laughs> and, and yeah. Um, also, October 1st, Sunday, is our Echo Arts Festival at Glen Echo Park. And so it's going to be a day filled with activities, um, demos by our visual artists, partners, um, performances. So it's essentially a festival that highlights all the amazing um, partners that we have at the park. It's also in celebration of His Hispanic Heritage Month. So we're going to have lots of different um, activations at the park that, um, you know, celebrates um, um, the culture. And so, and it's the last day you can ride the carousel. So hopefully we'll see you there, Catherine. Hopefully you bring your kids to ride the carousel for one last time before the season wraps up. Um, and that festival is from 12 to 5 o'clock. Um, Christina, I don't know if there's anything I'm missing before we wrap up. Um, if not, we'll say our goodbyes. Yep, I think we we covered the questions as far as I can see. Yep. Okay. All right. And Christina is our amazing exhibition coordinator. Um, she manages all the exhibitions in our partnership galleries. Um, and um, she does a fantastic job working with all the artists to um you know, launch and present all these amazing dynamic shows that we have at the park. So thank you very much, um, everyone, for being here today. And um, I hope you all have a good night. Um, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Catherine. We'll see you at the park soon.